Good afternoon everybody, my name is Michael and I'm here to help you understand how the domestic economy worked. So you have to pretend a little bit we're not in a mill. Um, and the way it works is the weaver has a loom, his wife is spinning, and I am a child of five years old. <laughs> and I get to card. So my little job, which my dearest mummy has given me, is to card. And so what I do is I pop a bit of cotton on the card, which are these spike whip cards here, and then I comb the card and the cotton is combed like that, so just to put a bit of stability in. What I do is I give it a good old brushing, much as you would have to. You know you can get these at pets at home, and you can brush your dog and your cat. But I have to brush cotton. Well, I actually so know a lady <laughs> who um, brushes dog hair and weaves it. You know what? Into cardigans, yeah. Guess what? Alpaca, dog, cat, human. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Gross, isn't it? And also recycled plastic. Gets melted down, issued through nozzles, and they make fibres, and you can then card those fibres and you can make plastic yarn. So I get what basically amounts to something that's nice and uh, combed. I take my magic tool called a stick, <laughs> I wrap it around the stick, and there I have my roll. Ah, wow. So I have, you can see, a selection of rolls in front of me. And what I then do is I'm now going to turn into a mummy person. So here it goes. I have a, I have a cottage wing. Okay, it's not the most modern, but it demonstrates the art of spinning. And also, you will see similarities between this and the spinning jenny, which is at the end of the uh, dais, and also the Compton mule, which you see downstairs. So the spinning spindle is still a valid technology. However, on my cottage wheel, every time you see one of those spirals, that's one full revolution. And when they drop off the end of the spindle, that revolution goes up to the cotton, and you can see the twist is in the cotton. But if we look here, what happens is, as I draw my hand up, you can see the twist steals the fibres out of the roll, the roll that I made earlier. So, a combination of my turning this wheel and drawing means that the fibres will go flying onto that lovely piece of yarn, which is going to be used in my husband's view shop. Okay, and when I get it to about there, I give it a good old spin. And that puts lots of twist into that fibre. And you can see it's quite strong. I then reverse it and I pop it onto the bobbin. Now that bobbin is actually called the quill. I know it looks like it's cardboard, but it actually was a bird quill in the day. And it allows for easy transportation because basically the weaver is not only using uh, his wife, he's using lots of ladies and some of them will be out there spread around the town and the village. Okay? So it's an easy way of transporting the cotton goods. So there we go. But there is spinning. I'm now going to miraculously change into a map. <laughs> Once my daughter is aged eight, she would be learn uh, taught how to spin. That is the situation. But my son will go to the weaver and the weaver will start it on the pern winder and the pern winder transfers this wonderful cotton product and it transfers it onto a much smaller bobbin. And the reason is because this bobbin goes inside the weaver shuttle. Okay, so that's the first step of the boys' education weaving. So here we go. <clears throat> the weaver. The weaver, he has a um, machine which is a frame loom, okay? And the frame loom is defined by very long threads called warps. And the threads which go left to right are installed on uh, this shovel. And so just to illustrate how it actually works, I will pop that uh, in there, if I can get it in there. So you can see the yarn is popping through that hole. 
When I throw this shuttle, dispenses. What's called left. So if you think of left and right, left and right, left and left. And the war, you have to be a fan of Star Trek. Yeah. Okay. Sadly, that's that's how I remember. remember. So my walk is threaded through these lovely little eyes. So I just ask your little um, Apple friend to maybe focus on theirs. And then um, each thread, each walk is threaded individually through those eyes. Okay. But when I press the pedals up and down, can you see the motion? Yeah. And the situation is this. I have a simple weave where two of the beams, the odd threads, are on one pedal. And the other two, or 20, the other two are on the opposite thread. So what I'm doing is I'm exchanging my warps like this. And I'm opening up what's called the shed. And there's my shed. You can see it this side, but the business end is this side. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw my shuttle down, here's my shuttle, and it will automatically dispense the finest yarn, which my dear wife has made. <laughs> and you can see it's loose, it's loose in the shed. So what we do is we take this, called a sleigh, it's got reeds in it, and those reeds push that yarn right up to the edge of the, of the fabric. And it's a Okay. And I just keep doing that, changing the pedal, beating it, changing the pedal, passing it through, beating it, changing the pedal, passing it through, beating it, changing the pedal. And I just keep doing that. Now then, a weaver's a clever man, he has to count. So I have to count 22 bits of white. And I'm going to do two that was going to be my next question. But I'm yeah. really nowhere near the red yet, so I'm going to stop there. <laughs> so how long has it taken to do, say, a metre? How so, it's recorded. This material, uh, look, we're going to have to guess. So I'm going to say 10 yards a day because it's quite a coarse material. Right. But, and um, that's constantly working. So 10 yeah, yards 10 a day. To, 10, 12, 15 yards a day. Mine at all. Flying shovel. Oh, so this was invented a lot later, wasn't it? John Penn, 1733. Right. He invents a rope. So, um, he invents this idea with a block and a rope and a handle. And the main reason he did it to start with was because when you want a broadcloth, you need a second person to throw the shuttle back at you. So it eliminates the second person. The disadvantage with it is, if you look at this arrangement, it's quite hard to get the shuttle out. Right. So when you want to change a colour, such as this, the hand wheel is still even more convenient. Mm. This is faster, but it's not as good. When you've got a broad though, you want this. Yeah. Because you need it the last second person. And you're sharing your profit. Or you're losing profit from your child. Yeah. So, <clears throat> we're on an arrow loom, but here, in essence, is why. After about 30 years, um, self-coloured yarns were expensive, more expensive relative to plain white calico, which people had begun to start printing. And when you had a single body colour, this is the advantage of this machine. A lot quicker, isn't it? It's a lot quicker. So how many yards are you, are you going to make in a I day? I haven't got them. No. Afraid. But what I can say is four more. times faster. Yeah. So if you're doing a single colour and you intend to print it, this is your machine. Yeah. It took 29 years for this to gain popular adoption. Right. So a lot more expensive. A long, long, long time. We're talking centuries to get to here. Yeah. Now that 1733 was that mention. I ask a question. <laughs> centuries just to get from that one to that. This must take ages to, to thread up to start. Yes, even it does. To start. It takes a day. There's a day. Mm. So, so spinning jenny, 1764. James Harvey has invented spinning jenny. It is a spinning wheel on its side. So here's my wheel. Yeah. Wow, and you can wheel. see my spindle. Yeah. Right. 
The clever bit about James Hargreaves' invention is not just that he managed multiple spindles, but the draw, the finger pinch, the flow, is achieved by that plan. And the reversing of the wheel is achieved by that faller wire there. So um. I'll show you how it operates. <coughs> You've taken your shoe off to do that. I have to because my foot is... Um, oh. Now bear in mind that it was traditional in mills to be barefoot. Um. Because wooden floorboards, uh, the cabinets that they people just took the shoes off. They kept their steel clogs at the time. Um, if somebody upstairs can show you a clog, in the right hand down at the top, um, you'll see that they're really thick. So this is a faithful reproduction, but there were no dimensions of the patient. So it's scaled from what would be the approximate size of the spindle. Okay, here we go. So it's a replica. So that gives you some idea. On the faller wire, when you go downstairs and see the Compton Mule, it too has a faller wire and it copies and emulates the spinning jenny's principles. So even though that machine down there was made in 1928, 1928, it represents the same technology as the spinning jenny. Twenty years after the spinning jenny is invented, the standard Gregor brings this mill. So it shows you the scale of development from the domestic economy and now We've got a machine that people actually start to invest in, put them in barns, make buildings, and they bring girls in. So it takes people out of the domestic economy into a factory system. Not 20 years after this invention, Samuel Gregor was his He was not an early adopter, he was an also that. So he was in the crowd. So it just shows you the compression and scale and evolution of all this machinery in such a short space of time. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome Thank to you.